Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Laura Spath and I have been on a carnivore only diet for four years. And one of the number one questions I get asked every single day is what is your cholesterol like? So in this video, I'm going to go in depth about some recent blood work that I had and share with you my cholesterol numbers. For this video, I enlisted the services of my friend and co-host and author, Judy Cho. She is Nutrition with Judy here on YouTube and she has an Instagram channel. She is the author of Carnivore Cure and the co-host of the podcast with me, Cutting Against the Grain. I actually used her services to get my blood work done. She did the order for me and then we went and reviewed the blood work together. It saved me the step of having to go through my doctor, convince them which blood panels I wanted done and then have to deal with them reading it for me. I just went straight to Judy. If you're looking for information or ways to have blood work done, you can go directly to her website and have those done for yourselves. Judy services can offer an out of network insurance invoice. So I actually paid up front for all my blood work. And then she gave me an invoice that I will submit to my insurance company to get some of that stuff covered. Saves you the step of having to find a low carb carnivore or keto friendly doctor in your area. Thanks for joining me, Judy. I know we are going to go through my cholesterol blood work here, and then maybe we'll get into the rest of it with kidneys and thyroid and everything else that people ask. But I really want to do an in-depth discussion on cholesterol in general. Uh, people want to know what is that total cholesterol number. And then I think the important thing for people to realize is what does the breakdown of that number look like? So we're going to get right into it. Get, give them my total cholesterol numbers, and then we'll break out the ratio. And maybe you can explain to them why I'm not going to have a heart attack any second. <laughs> Yes. Um, so the standard conventional blood work typically just gets your total cholesterol. Sometimes they do HDL, LDL, the LDL is considered kind of like your bad cholesterol or known as that. Um, and then HDL is like the good cholesterol and then triglycerides are the floating fat in your bloodstream. Some doctors only get the total cholesterol. That is not any information really. It just shares how much cholesterol, but that doesn't really mean or explain the context of your cholesterol. So that's one um, bit of information, but we also went into details of, um, and Laura has gotten her NMR lipo profile, which basically breaks down LDL and all the different types of cholesterol into particle sizes. And that is a lot more important and nuanced information to understand if you have higher LDL on a low carb diet, which is common, it helps people to understand, okay, well, most of my LDL is the large particle size. And we'll get into that. To answer your question, your total cholesterol was 230. The standard range is between 100 and 199. So technically you are above or out of range for that. And then your LDL was 155. And then your HDL was 58. So both of those are in range. The LDL is a little bit high, but again, it's context. So Generally, as you eat a high fat diet, since cholesterol is fat, um, it will go up and it's not necessarily just that you have the LDL or the LDL is high or the total uh, cholesterol is high, but it's really context. So you want your triglycerides to be under a hundred standard care says 150, but if you're eating low carb, that it actually should go down under a hundred is a lot more better of a marker to consider in terms of triglycerides and risk of heart disease. It really matters where your HDL and your LDR are together. And so if your HDL is, I guess, above 50, 60, and then the higher it goes, but you don't want it maybe above 90, then it doesn't matter as much if your LDL is going up. So there are people with LDLs, 300, 400, and people that are even in the thousands and they may be hyper responders. I know it's a lot of context, so you may want to look into Dave Feldman for that. That's one website I want to mention is cholesterolcode.com, where you can go and input your cholesterol numbers. Uh, he has a lot of information about eating a high fat diet and your cholesterol in general and research we've done there. Um, for context as well, my cholesterol has pretty much been around this range for the last four years. Um, when I first started a keto carnivore diet, my cholesterol shot up to about 250, but the ratios were not where they are today. Um, I did have higher triglycerides and it took me about a year of being on this diet for that number to improve where from year one to year two, my cholesterol total number stayed the same, but all of the ratios improved. Those triglycerides went way down and my, uh, you know, ratios, everything looked great. And now I skipped last year, year three, and now we're in year four. And that number is really close to the same. It's gone down slightly, but rather than being in the 250s, you mentioned we're at 230. And so those ratios continue to like stay at a positive element. 
I also will say, you know, just a little quote that I love to hear is that uh, Nina Teicholz has said before, uh, who's, you know, an established advocate for um, changing the dietary guidelines and for eating a high fat diet. She says that the demonization of cholesterol is one of the biggest problems that we have in modern American medicine. And so understanding that women, especially for hormone health, need cholesterol. Uh, and it's a lot of what keeps us healthy. It's unfortunate that the total cholesterol number is really what defines people's heart health nowadays, because it's just very inaccurate. Right. And depending on where your LDL is and your total cholesterol, doctors will recommend statins and statins aren't the most ideal. I mean, there are concerns with statins. I mean, one out of a hundred people that have high cholesterol, maybe will get benefited from that. And with statins, there's always consequences of mental health imbalances, mood imbalances, muscle issues. So there's always these thoughts. And again, it context matters. I mean, just five years ago, the data, the dietary guidelines, they found that there's no real good studies that show that cholesterol or a certain cap on cholesterol is bad. So when we were growing up, there were these caps of this is the most amount of cholesterol you should be eating in a day. And so that's why everyone would say, you can't eat more than two eggs a day because of the cholesterol. Well, they removed that cap and they never really fully announced it. And again, it makes you wonder, well, if cholesterol is not, there's no cap for it and it's not really bad for you, then why are we still fearing saturated fats, which do make your LDL go up? But again, in context, it's not a bad thing. And a lot of people ask every day, they say, my cholesterol went up. Here's my total cholesterol. This is what my doctor says. What's your cholesterol? And my first question to them in re uh, reply is what was the breakdown? What are your triglycerides? What were the breakdown of that? And, and most of the time they have no idea. And that's because doctors aren't even really giving them that breakdown back. They're just saying X number is your total cholesterol. This is the medication that you need without truly understanding it. Even as recently, as long as I've been doing this way of eating, understanding like large particle and small particles, like those were not things I really understood until I heard a speech given um, recently. And so there's so much more information, I think that is just not common. So what I really want to share is since people want to hear the numbers, um, let's talk a little bit about the markers for LDL, HDL, and then we just already talked about how triglycerides should probably be under a hundred. I think that's ideal. So I did this graphic with Dr. Saladino. Um, basically, this is just sharing the study from the Framingham study. This was um, done in 1977, cardiovascular disease risk. And if you see, there's context with that, right? So it's not just your total cholesterol that matters, but your LDL. And then essentially, what really matters is where your HDL is. So if your HDL is low, as in 25, let me pull this up, zoom in a little bit. But if you are at 25, then yes, if your LDL goes higher, it's, there is a risk, but if your HDL is high, and that's why I really like HDLs within 50 and above, and you're at 58. So in context, you're like right over here in terms of risk, where's your LDL is. Okay. So you're right down here, which the lower you are in this graphic, the lower your risk of heart disease is. So again, it's that context. If your HDL is at 85, even if you're at 220, look how low the risk is. And this is what is more important than saying, I have total cholesterol that's super high or my LDL is super high. It really matters on your context. And again, that's where I think knowing all the different nuances, context is super important when it comes to cardiovascular risk. I think the first step is really having the LDL, the HDL, the triglycerides and your total cholesterol. So that gives you a snapshot. And then also Laura, how she mentioned the different ratios and that is now becoming a little bit more common. So that's good, but you want to take it a step further, especially for some people that are like the lean mass hyper responders, their LDL will go up to 1,600, 800. And that's when I want to see their particle size where that will determine, okay, is all that LDL, the bad LDL, as they say, is it really safe? And I think that's where it gets really important to understand your particle size to make it super simple. We have different particle sizes of the big fluffy kind where they're buoyant and they're protective in a sense, and they're good for you. The smaller ones are a little bit more risky. Think about um, a highway. And if you have a lot of little, little cars, there's a higher chance of accidents versus if there were just big, big trucks. So that's the way you can kind of think of these particles. So the smaller particle size you have, the less ideal it is, the higher risk of cardiovascular disease, insulin resistance, and so on and so forth. The, the larger your LDL particle size, 
the safer it may be that your LDL is high. So a lot of doctors do not order this test when it's a little bit more expensive. Doctors have to go through insurance and they don't want to have to fight for you as to why they're mm -hmm. Um, putting through a test that's more expensive. But if you want to do this test, it's called the NMR lipoprotein lipid uh, panel. And then I also recommend getting the LPIR score, which is an insulin score with it. And that's part of the reason why I just went to you. I had gone and emailed my doctor and asked for a specific tests and she kind of went back and forth with me about it. So I just skipped that process and had Judy order that uh, for me and then I'll submit it to my insurance company afterwards. I also want to say too, like for context, people think that this cholesterol number, unfortunately, is this one indicator that tells you your overall health. I weighed 263 pounds. I was pre-diabetic. I was insulin resistant and I had a myriad of health issues. And my total cholesterol was 127. And if we're looking at just that number, you would think that I had this fantastic health when really I was very sick and very obese and so many issues. Uh, and as a woman, especially, I clearly, I think I would argue that my cholesterol wasn't high enough uh, to have right. healthy hormones. And so I think those are things that when people are looking at this diet, we're looking for just that total cholesterol number, but there's so much more context uh, and importance that needs to be looked into with this. And also there's a lot of other markers with cardiovascular risk, right? You can look at homocysteine, you can look at CRP, blood glucose, insulin markers. So I don't like generally just looking at somebody's cholesterol, even if they had all the particle sizes, I really want to see a full uh, blood work panel done so that there's a story. And even though blood work is just a snapshot in time and you can completely alter it within a week, but generally you want to see all of the markers in context to get a story of that person's health and then also their symptoms, how they look and a lot of other things. So I don't think we should just focus on cholesterol. There are markers that we'd want to attain but that isn't the end of the story. That isn't the end of for, because my cholesterol is low. I have no risk of heart disease. It's just not true. And Judy and I did a full panel. We actually are going to continue this conversation and discuss the rest of my blood work. We're going to get into my C peptide. Uh, we're going to talk about my thyroid, my kidneys. That's another thing people always want to know is like, how are your kidneys doing eating all this protein? We have a podcast episode where we broke down the types of blood work that you could ask your doctor for or that you could order if you're looking for a comprehensive panel. And I will link that down below in the description. And then this, that was the, the cholesterol conversation. We're going to continue this on my locals. To be honest, I don't really need the, um, all of my specific blood work and medical information out here on YouTube. So if you are a supporter of mine on locals, uh, you can come watch the rest of this video and hear about my personal numbers and then check out those uh, podcasts if you want to know which test you should get for yourself. Thanks for watching.